So I was trying to dial in a procedure for an aluminum butt joint, full penetration aluminum butt joint. If I just ran a bead on a plate and it penetrated, would those settings transfer over to a butt joint? Let's find out. I was working on another video with this thickness, so I'm pretty sure about 43 amps is going to be close. I'm going to set the AC frequency to 120 hertz because that's a good all-around setting. Another factor is gas flow, especially since I'm using this number 5 clear cup. The sweet spot flow range can be fairly narrow with a number 5 cup. I'm using brand new 6061 metal 050, wiped with acetone, but that's it. I've got some scribe lines marked on the front to kind of keep me on track to go straight. And I've also put some scribe line kind of hash marks on the back side. And you'll see why in just a second. I'm using a slight upward angle on the torch angle. I find that helpful on a horizontal joint like this, along with getting the gas flow right. Doing a horizontal weld like this is really not much more difficult than any other position. But you do have to pay attention to your heat and how much filler wire you add because you can get a little underfill on the top edge of that bead, on the toe of the weld. Gravity's pulling it down, so if you're going to have any underfill, it'll typically be on the top toe. You need enough amperage on something like this that if you're running over a tack weld, you've got plenty to consume it. At the same time, if you've got too much amperage, you might get a little undercut or underfill on the top toe. Right around the middle of that well, there's a little shadow that might be a little underfill. Well, let's take a look at this penetration side a little bit. The reason I put those scribe lines on there, number one, they're every one inch, so you can tell the travel speed. And those scribe lines also demonstrate the fact that all aluminum has an aluminum oxide film on it. Another factor when welding aluminum is sometimes that you have to soak it a little bit before you start penetrating. Since I set the machine to 42 amps and went full pedal, I've got to wait around just a few seconds before I get moving. So from the time I go full pedal here to the time I'm penetrating, it's going to take about six full seconds. Aluminum can fool you. Even on something as thin as 50 thousandths, it's easy not to get penetration for the first quarter inch or so. So you want to hang around just a little bit before you start moving. I put those scribe lines on the back of the aluminum plate just to kind of show, to illustrate a point on how tough aluminum oxide is. Aluminum oxide melts at around 3,600 Fahrenheit. Pure aluminum melts somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,000 Fahrenheit. Regardless of the exact melting points, it's over three times as high a melting point as pure aluminum. That's why those scratches are unaffected. The molten metal pushes them out, but it doesn't actually melt that aluminum oxide. It's kind of like a peel coat. And so on the welded side, the cleaning action can break up that aluminum oxide. On the back side, no cleaning action going on. So can we, can we benefit from wire brushing or cleaning somehow the back side? Let's find out. There's a lot of talk about smearing aluminum oxide. And so some people think you should only use one direction when you're using a hand brush. I don't know if there's anything to that, but that's what I did here. I want to see if we can see a difference in the first part of this bead as opposed to where I brushed it. I reduced the amperage to 40 amps just by 3 amps here because, like I said, I'm, I noticed a little bit of underfill at the top of the edge of that bead. So I know from that previous clip that I need to wait around here and let it soak just a second or two before I head off so that I get decent penetration. It's still penetrating a little bit less than it was on the first bead. 3 amps can make a difference. And also, since it's inboard more, there's more area to conduct the heat away. As it gets into the brushed area here, you can tell a difference. It's a subtle difference, but there's a difference. I strictly brushed the penetration side. I didn't do anything to the welded side here. Cleaning action from the arc seems to be taking care of that pretty well. Those scribe lines are still unaffected, but the penetration does seem a little smoother. Again, we're set at 40 amps. I'll go full pedal. For the first weld, the edges were prepped with a deburring tool, but no wire brushing. I'm going to start inboard here, about a half inch in, just like I did on the plate. And that is strictly to kind of tell how long it takes to penetrate, just like on the other plate. And again, it's a full five or six seconds before it starts penetrating. My travel speed is fairly slow here. And if I picked up my travel speed, I could definitely pick up my amperage. 
and I might even want to go to a 332 filler to keep up with that. But this is a starting point. And from what I can see on the back side here, I wouldn't want to go much lower than 40 amps. It's just enough to reconsume that tack in the middle. Just enough to go over the tacks, but I wouldn't want to go much colder than that. I'm adding rod roughly once a second, and I'm probably traveling about an eighth of an inch in between dabs here. And that makes for a travel speed of between five and a half and six inches a minute, if you do the math. So for weld number two, edges are prepped, both sides wire brushed with the hand brushed in only one direction. We're going to see if we notice a difference on that penetration side. And for that matter, since both sides were wire brushed, let's see if we notice a difference on this side. I still notice a little cloudy area, even though I set the pre-flow for a second, I'm still getting a little cloudy area when I light up. I can't swear that this is welding any better or any cleaner on the front side. It was really clean metal. I, mean, I just removed a peel coat and wiped it down with acetone and I wire brushed this one. It's definitely making a difference on the penetration side. That's got a whole different texture to it. It's consuming that tack just like it did on the other one. Not noticing a huge difference on the, on the welded side here, but again, it didn't hurt anything. Just a note, if you're going to use a wire brush, use a stainless wire brush and use one that has not been used on anything else, especially one that's not been used on carbon steel. That'll mess you up. There are certain abrasives that work well for cleaning aluminum, but sometimes nothing beats a wire brush. Here are all the details and settings for this joint. Just to be clear, I set the machine at 40 amps and went full pedal. Like a lot of people, I usually just set it higher than what I need and use the foot pedal. But for the sake of developing a procedure and knowing exactly what it took, 40 amps is exactly what it took.